Prussian blue because that's my greener blue. And then I'll add cadmium yellow. And this thing will take a lot of paint, so, you know, mix a lot of paint. And the more you get it down in here, the more it'll fill in the bladder. I, I just don't need that much paint. Now, the thing is, it's, it's going to make quite a green, and I actually think that green's okay. But if you look at it, there's a lot, the, the light hits the ground, and the ground is kind of brown and orange. And it gives you these kind of orangish reflected lights. You know, plus the lights also hitting some of the leaves on here and reflecting up into the shadows. So you see these kind of orangey things going up into the shadow. So I'm going to add a little bit of red into there. Just a little bit. Makes it a little bit more of a natural orange. And now I'm going to get that in. I'll just twist it like that and give myself a really nice point. Sometimes I'll, I'll just take my finger and go like that to get a really nice point. And that'll give me, you know, almost as good of a point. Well, wow, as good of a point as this, pretty much. So I could see that on this right over here, uh, the, the left sides of things are catching, um, are going into shadow. If you take each leaf, it's the left side, it's just as a guide. But you'll find after a while, you don't even need it very much and you know oftentimes I'll just that's why usually uh, I'll, I might even use it something a little longer because it kind of gets your hand away from it but you actually have a lot of control with uh, with a big a big brush you got a big shadow coming here and that one and variation to that here and there and in the center there, it gets a little bit <clears throat> um, more cluttered. Mm -hmm. And some of these leaves actually cast shadows over other leaves. So you can see how this one's casting a shadow over here. All this is in shadow. And this is in shadow. Down. And it, I'm going to add a lot more red to it now and come down into the dead stuff. You just break up my stroke. Honestly, you don't need to paint every one of those little octopusy things hanging down or whatever they're called. I don't know. To Tentacles. It. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. You know, just, I'm just going with the feel of them. So I'm just kind of, okay. This casts a shadow down like this, and then mostly everything over here is in shadow. Way off over there. And it just kind of breaks up. We get a couple of little things underneath, underneath little tentacles over here. And uh, our darkest dark is going to be way up under there because Uh, that's where the place is not getting as much light and I'm gonna go ahead and use a violet in there because it's better than black black is boring I, I, you get a few dark things within the tentacles too and I'm just gonna do it wet into wet and let it be watercolorish also down deep into this stuff in there some of those you want to hit some dark stuff down deep into these guys and then if you want if you wanted to just bring it out a little bit you can take and um, this is called the backstroke <laughs> sorry uh, I just made that up it's early okay <laughs> Just kind of cutting them back up into there, and I'm getting some interesting little edges there. I can play with those. Great brush. Brush is helping. What's the manufacturer on that? In and out. You see how that gives it some pop? So I'm not really thinking about the whole composition like last week. 
and you don't always have to do the, the whole and this is a great place to do little vignettes anything you like I mean little small things can be great um, how about it why don't I just take this out over here and with this color in the background I'll, I'll hit a couple of variations I'm, I'm gonna throw a little magenta in that just to uh, give it a little bit of fun one color usually isn't so fun usually a, a color field like see this blue now it has some yellow some and if you really want to punch it give it some impact mm. then you go deep down into the dark and smack a dark in there I don't know why people don't do that more Oh yeah, and if you really want a nice dark, I'm not using a whole lot of water on this brush. See how it's dry? The brush is kind of dry. <clears throat> so just make sure your brush is dry and you're getting the, the paint kind of thick and sticky on there. And that'll give you a dark. If you put it on with a lot of water, even though it looks dark on your, it, it'll still dry several values lighter. So like for instance, I want to, I want to pull out this leaf Right there, I'm just gonna, and as you can see, it's going on pretty dry. So if you want a dark to dry dark, put it on pretty dry. That's one of the most asked questions in watercolor. So, fun to play with. And you can get expressive in the background if you like. You know, play with anything you like. Everybody always says, I'll spend all this time on this and they go, ah, look at your background. Great background. <laughs> I'm going, thanks, I guess. How do you do those backgrounds? I don't know, I just put a bunch of party <laughs> colors in there and <laughs> let them play with each other. Um, Working wet into wet, but your paper's dry. Is that correct? Yeah, I don't have any water on the paper. Okay. My ground color. I'm going to throw some ground color in there. It's a bit warmer. Some orangey, kind of a dirty orange color. I'm just going to put it over the whole thing. And you certainly could add more stuff. You could add more aloes or whatever. I'm not going to. But, and I'd leave a lot of the white of the paper because that's a watercolor aesthetic. It just shows uh, that you kind of nailed it on the first try rather than, or you, you kept the freshness of the paint.